Um, and two things strike me, and really in response to, to Waldo's really provocative questions about inevitability and avoidability of these of this sort of scenario. I mean, obviously, if probably anybody who knows me doesn't have to ask me whether I, I support this this vision or not. I'm, I'm you know sort of have a pretty strong uh, uh, civil libertarian bent on these issues, but. Um, there was at a time, and I think it still is, 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 is extant somewhere in our internet community, a sort of Pollyanna-ish notion held, I think, largely by engineers and promoted largely by engineers, that the internet, the technology itself is so powerful that it will inevitably work its way around any... So any, 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 any policy obstacle that could possibly come. You policy people in Washington are so cute with your laws and your rules <laughs> and your meetings because our internet is such a perfect testament, pinnacle of technology that it, can, it will find a workaround to all your stupid laws. Mm -hmm. So whatever, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to be here in Silicon Valley creating the future. You know what I mean? And, and, and I hate to say it, so, but that really was the attitude. I, I also, in a life, before that life, I was a reporter and uh, uh, covering tech policy issues for the Washington Post, and, and I, 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 uh, I really observed that. And when people from Silicon Valley, that, you know, this is probably more 10 years ago, um, and I think some of the companies have sort of personally felt how Washington can impact their life, and they've gotten a little bit more uh, humble about it. Um, and they've you know, joined organizations like Steve's and, 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 and sort of and gotten serious about interacting with this policy environment um, in a way that's more, more fundamental. But, but I'm, I'm concerned that that, as Karen Marilyn said, I think that still exists to some extent. And it's, well, really, really, it's a really troubling effort because the people who need to be our biggest allies in this space, the engineers who actually build the technology, kind of almost sort of still have this kind of dismissive, well, yeah, it's bad what they're trying to do, but we're always going to be able to work around it. And I think China and the sort of great firewall and sort of how they've been able to sort of directly impact people's lives has proven that really if policymakers uh, uh, have enough of power uh, at, at the network hubs and sort of in, 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 in the portals into their country, they can really do almost anything. And, and, and the technology can't work around it. And it can be prevented from working around it. Well, except for maybe only the most elite users who have sort of the, the dark nets and the ways of, of sort of uh, working around these things. So I think that's one, one observation, and I'll try to keep it up short because I'm not, I, I know I'm getting off the speed round idea. Um, the other thing I'm aware of is, as a person uh, who worked in civil liberties community, works in the tech policy space, is that <clears throat> online civil liberties don't poll well, especially free speech. They don't poll well. If you ask people questions about, I mean, you heard Lee talking about yeah. it earlier about, you know, oh, I want there to be free speech, but not for hate. And you know, free speech. I think people don't get it. It's not there to protect the speech that we all like. You know what I mean? Like the the the, the, <laughs> the constitutional protections for free speech are there to protect unpopular speech and negative speech and, and the speech, the Skokie Nazis, and the, you know, the people who are, who who have, have, have you know said things that most people find uh, offensive. You know, and it's that, not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so so. So the and, and, and my, my 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 experience in observing polling for years, because I think polling is fascinating on these issues, is that these these don't poll well. The, so online civil liberties don't poll well, and that's that is terrifying when we talk about inevitability, because you know you ask people and you say I'm going to take away this freedom of yours in exchange for X, you know uh, nebulous uh, protection. The answer is often, more often than many of us may be in the sort of civil liberties community or, or sort of around those spaces, is, is more often yes than, than we'd really like it to be. You know? So I think that that's kind of the other, the other observation I have is that I don't think it's inevitable. I'm not a fatalist, but I think that, uh, that this, you have to fight this Pollyanna attitude and you have to, you have to, we have to get away from this idea that the Internet's going to prevail and goodness is going to prevail without our intervention. We have to intervene as advocates for a free Internet to, to preserve the free internet, because the free internet will not preserve itself.